Now with us to speak about Netanyahu's final deadline to form the new government is legal counsel for the Haleli Kut Forum and Im Tirzu, advocate Ziv Maor. Thank you so much for joining, Ziv. Thank you for having me. So it's taking Netanyahu so much longer than expected to form the government, and the voting public has already been waiting for so long. What's still the holdups? No, it's not taking more than expected. It was expected. The Israeli basic law of the government allows the, uh, the prime minister up to 42 days since the new Knesset has been uh, uh, adjourned, and we're still within this timeline. And the nature of negotiations, as they are, that every party takes as much time as possible to maximize their benefits. Uh, now, this period of 42 days is often necessary when there are complications, when there are compromises to be made in the ideology of the various parties of the negotiation. This is not the case right now. Everybody knows what the next government is going to look like, uh, grosso modo. Uh, there are details to be uh, decided, and it is completely natural that for it to take so long. If the period within the law would have said 10 days, it would have taken 10 days because it is 42 days. It will take 42 days. That's that, that, that just the way it is and the way it was expected to be. Expected or not, will Netanyahu need one final extension until December 25th or do you see it ending here on Wednesday? I see it ending here in Wednesday. If something extremely unexpected happens, it will end on Wednesday. Now, is there any chance of complication and no government and back to elections, or is this just a fantasy? Well, there is always a chance, but the chances are very, very low. The Israeli public made a very clear decision on November 1st about the form of the government that they want to see. And the, I, I, given that you do have a four mandates margin, you have uh, the ability uh, to let go of four individuals, and, and each and every one of the 64 uh, knows that, then no one have an, a, a real leverage over that. Now, about, about uh, three hours before we are filming this interview, the Knesset have decided to amend the basic law that allowed for four members of a single party uh, to, secede, to secede from this party. This is no, no longer the case. This means that this coalition will be stable, and uh, there, has to, there has to be something very unexpected and very unnatural for Israeli politics for this party, not only for this government, not only not to be able to assemble itself in the very uh, next week, but also not to hold on for the next four years. What more can you tell us about the law uh, you just spoke about, discussed in the Knesset today? So there's several laws that are on the table of the Knesset that are, that are considered to be uh, preconditions for the new, new government or the new coalition to be assembled. Uh, the one that did pass today and the one uh, of which the legislation was finalized is the most worrying one. The, the last coalition which was unstable and eventually uh, didn't uh, finish its four years needed a law that will allow for potentials in Israel, you would call it... Um, uh, I forgot the, the English word, but uh, individuals for, for, from a single party is to uh, secede from their party. So in order to prevent this, in order to, uh, 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 to secure Israeli democracy and to make sure that the parties do act uh, in the way that their voters expect them to, uh, four, four uh, members of the Knesset are no, no, no longer allowed to secede from their party. The, the, the minimum number will become eight, which is a number big enough uh, uh, for a party to, to basically say that if such a big number, eight members of a single party, choose to, society, to secede, this must mean that something in terms of ideology happened. Four uh, might be considered opportunist. This is why this amendment was needed. But as I said, this is the most boring and the least important amendment on the Knesset table. The more important ones are the ones that are designed uh, to increase the Minister of National Security uh, authority over the police, the one that makes the, uh, the, the, the Attorney General and other uh, unelected uh, employees of the government very angry. Uh, and, and they should be angry, but not because they're right, but, but because they're taking something that they've stolen from the Israeli public many, many years ago, and now the Israeli public demands it back. No, no other democracy allows non-elected officials to intervene in police affairs so much. In any other democracy, the, the public elected have the final right in the very essence of the governmental actions, which is policing. It's completely uh, ludicrous, uh, the, the argument that the uh, uh, GA is making that uh, politicization of the police is something wrong. The, the police is operated and governed and supervised by politicians in every democracy. This is the way that it should be. This is the way that it is in other places. And Israeli police and Israeli GA has proven in the past few decades that they're not worthy 
of, of managing the Israeli uh, personal security without political inter intervention. The, uh, personal security situation in Israel is very, very poor. I think that uh, even uh, the viewers of this channel know it, even, the, in, even though they are, they are abroad. And uh, this is something that should be amended under the, uh, the new legis legislation at hand. Ziv Malvin, very interesting. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.